So welcome back everybody, this is Paul again from BestStuffToBuy.com and today I'm going to review some compasses and talk a little bit about different kinds of compasses that exist out there and how they're used and so on and the types of maps that are good. Now, there's a lot of really great compasses out there and some of them, for example, like this one here is probably about 50 years old from World War II and this one here, I don't know how old that one is, but it's pretty old as well. And, you know, they all work basically the same way. They have a needle that's magnetically tuned to the North Pole or South Pole of the Earth or whatever. But how you use them makes a big difference and a lot of people are not really sure what to buy, for example. Now, on the smaller level, you have something like this. This is a pretty basic and a really well-made compass by Brunton. And it's translucent, also very colorful, so it's hard to lose. You can stick it down on a map, for example. What you would do typically with your map is you find out where Magnetic North is and then you orient the map to where Magnetic North aligns on the map aligns with Magnetic North on the compass. Now, if you look at a map, typically there's lines here going crosswise and those are due north. Those are the, what they call true north. So Magnetic North is a little different. Magnetic North has a little variation across the world and you have to look on the map and aviation maps are a really great place for that. Also, uh, boating maps have a very, very great uh, detail. But you find where true north and magnetic are, north correction are, and you put your compass down there and you decide where you're going to go. Now, typically, there's a lot of mountains, for example. On this map over here, you have Mount Hood, which is a big, huge mountain. So if somebody was lost over here in this part of the jungle or the forest, the mountains, they might be able to sight on Mount Hood, should they be able to get up to a sufficient elevation. And by doing some basic geometry and thinking and calculating, you can determine your rough distance and the altitude that you're at and so on. So again, there's a lot of different kinds of compasses and this is basically called a base plate compass, okay? And it'll get you your heading, it's easy to read, very well made by Brunton and again it has this lanyard here which I put on basically to, you don't want to lose your compass. Now, Brunton also makes a device like this. This has an adjustable um, declination scale on the back here that you can adjust and correct and then you can line up. This is a little different. It has a, a bit more sophistication. It has a mirror here which you put down. You can sight and you can look down this angle and you can turn this to using the mirror you can align these two uh, points here including the north needle and then you look at your heading and you say okay I made such and such a heading. Now some of these types of compasses as we'll see these sighting compasses can be used also as a um, what you call a, just to calculate an altitude from a distance. Now to calculate the altitude from a distance, for example, what you do is you measure something, the altitude of a nearby object by calculating, for example, using a pedometer such as this one. You measure out your steps. You say, let's say I want to walk 100 feet and how many steps is that? And you measure how many uh, feet your, your uh, pace is and you set yourself and you make some measurements. Now, all of these are tools basically to do the same thing is to get yourself across uh, in some terrain. Now I have a map here beneath me that is the, up in the northwest part of Connecticut of, of Canada. Very remote area. These are aviation maps and they show rivers and lakes and different kinds of beacons and so on. And if you have to get lost somewhere it really wouldn't hurt to have an aviation map because there's a lot of really important detail on an aviation map. Plus you can see where the routes are from the different kinds of aircraft so that if you can get yourself along one of these routes, for example, you have a much better chance of getting notified. Now, here's an amazing gadget. This is called a, a, bearing, a hand bearing Cosmos. And this actually is an older device but still works. I recently tested it. <clears throat> it has a scale here with the radio receiver for what they call the VORs, which is the airport nearby me, is 395, and this goes up to 400, I guess it's kilohertz, yep, yeah, so it's right here in the scale. And the VOR bearings, for example, are in this frequency, so if you were to have this with you, and you could put a little headphone in there, and you will find the relative bearing to where this beacon is. It will be strongest at a certain point, and you aim your compass and line up, and you know where the beacon is, and the very, very helpful device. Now this. They are fading out some of those uh, beacons now, but I tell you what, you know, as long as there's some around, this could be a very useful device to have. Now, among the different kinds of compasses, this is another one by Brunton I really like, and I tell you what, this is probably the top of the line uh, nowadays. You see, here's a German marching compass from, I guess, the World War II. It's measured in mils, not degrees, and I'll go into that later. It's a sighting compass with the, you can uh, do it, use it as a clinometer. It has uh, a little sighting 
fin here which you can look down very very useful device here very long lasting and I love this compass um, but this is a modern version it's made out of plastic instead of aluminum and it has some instructions here with it and it has a adjustment scale for your declination and so on so this particular compass the bunch of the clips I highly recommend uh, this is a really great uh, compass and another one which is called a, a bearing compass is uh, let's say you're on a ship or something and you want to you see a lighthouse in the distance and it's night and you can't tell if ex, uh, how fast you're moving so you keep cruising along your sailboat and everything you take another sighting uh, looking at this and you can easily see down there and it says okay well maybe I've moved a certain number of degrees so you know that the lighthouse wasn't moving so you know that you've moved a certain amount and you can put that on your scale on your map and calculate exactly where you are now I'll go through a few popular compasses here. This one here is a very common, it's called a Lensatic compass. Uh, it's been around for a long time. There's a lot of different varieties of it. If you do buy one, get yourself a really good quality one because they're out there and this one's old but it's a really good shape and it's very accurate and it has a nice little sighting gadget and when you, it glows in the dark after you expose it to some sun or moon, uh, it'll glow for a while if you shine your flashlight on it. So that's a great little gadget to have. So, Again, compasses are very, very important tools and very old, uh, but like I said, get yourself a really good one. This is another marching compass from, I, I may have been Germany or whatever, but it's like, uh, wow, you know, you sight down through this thing, and then you can use the mirror to see where your heading is, and you turn this again. This is a uh, glows in the dark, so that's very helpful. So, what I suggest, if you get a compass, get a maybe two, and get really good ones and Brunton is a good manufacturer of compasses this one here uh, look it up online I think it's made it starts with a W wet or white or something like that a very good hand uh, bearing compass um, again a little bit of uh, technology to recommend as well just a little protractor this is for aviation but you can put it on your map and uh, line it up with true north or magnetic north as you choose and draw lines and see your heading and, and the direction that you need to go to certain places should you get lost. And this could be useful in a balloon or a small plane and those kinds of devices. Um, here's a great book called uh, Finding Your Way Without a Map or Compass by Harold Gaddy. There's a lot of very, very important information in here that you can use. Uh, I'll tell you what, for a long time people did not know how to navigate without uh, with a compass because they didn't have one so they used the stars and nowadays we use the stars and we use compasses uh, the stars are based on the uh, physical north pole and the compass is based on the magnetic north pole so if you cross references those lines then you will uh, be able to angle yourself and find your position now here's a modern version of a compass that's on this watch here there's a lot of them out here like this but you know, it works. It's pretty uh, acceptable. I mean, there's a lot of features to it. It has a barometer and altimeter and so on. It's pretty basic. It may be off somewhat, but it will certainly show you the trend and and the weather basically uh, and it depends a lot on the air pressure. So this is a very helpful device too. Of course, it depends on battery and you wouldn't want to crush it or drop it in the water or anything, but it's still a useful thing to have around. It don't cost very much. Um, Again, lights are very important, so if you're going to try to read your compass at night, uh, a lot of them glow in the dark, you take a little flash like this and you shine it on it, and it will set those things up like this one, it will glow after a while, you turn it off for a few minutes and then you can see it glowing. So, this is a little piece I made about compasses, there's a lot of really good ones out there, shop online, um, sometimes you'll find a really great...